from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, welcome to Ask an Engineer, where it's me, Lady Ada the Engineer, with PT and double PT uh, on uh, camera control. It's a camera control day. Uh, we got an exciting show tonight. We've got Raspberry Pi B Plus news, we got tutorials, we got new products, we've got like coupes. I got like, yeah. I, I got a crazy thing going on. Yeah. YouTube is hopefully up. Yeah, Maybe it's working now. It is now? Okay, you got like LED oh, no. bracelets. It's just a party. Uh, tell them what's on tonight's show. No, I don't know what's going on here. Who okay. knows what's going on? All right. On tonight's show, we've got a code. It's B plus. This is pretty much the Raspberry Pi B plus show tonight. Yay, B plus show yeah, starring B plus. It is the Raspberry Pi model B plus is here. We'll be talking about all that and more. Special guest B plus. We'll briefly go over the show and tell. We'll just tell you who showed up and what they showed quickly. Pack a mill bag, we'll stop by for just a second. We'll quickly look at the Adafruit Learning System, more tutorials. Quick video from our wearable electronic bonanza that we have each week. 3D printing, and then it's kind of all Pi Day. Pi, all Pi, time. Pi. We'll have some new products, we'll answer your questions, we'll have a trivia question, all that and more on, you guessed it. Ask a Pi. No, ask, ask an engineer. A, ask a B. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so much B. Plus. Yeah. So What's up? Stuff. Okay. All sorts of stuff is going on here. It's insanity here at the Adafruit yeah. Warehouse. Just bonkers. We we got our hands on the B plus um, Wednesday, so we've been yeah. cooking up a storm of revising things, testing things, tutorialing things. Yeah. Things, things, things. So my mic was off. Whoever didn't hear me um, with this other stuff, there's a bunch of stuff. We're he just, was just we're, he we're was just singing Morrissey lyrics. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. We got a code B plus. B plus. It's this. There's that. There's this. This that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pie thing. All that and more. In. Come on. Ask an engineer. This, we're back. You watch this show every week. It's yeah. It's the same thing every week. I can yeah. be replaced with a robot. You can be replaced with a robot. It's our charming personalities that make the uh, yeah. make the show. It's one of those days. Okay, let's uh, let's restart this start okay. starting thing. Start. Okay, Pi. so it's uh, Raspberry Pi Model B Plus is here. Um, so we take Bitcoin. You can pay for Bitcoin with all this stuff. Surprisingly enough, um, we have a fair amount of Bitcoin orders every day. I expected it to drop really? a little bit. No, it's steady. Bing. The B is for B Plus. No, it's for Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay, anyways. Um, we have our free deals, which are nine nine dollars. Yeah, for a PCB ruler, and then um, two hundred. UPS Ground. Um, continental US. Yeah, Continental US. Now, the cool thing about UPS Ground is it's trackable, reliable shipping. It's um, the best shipping. It's the best shipping. Uh, we looked at all the shipping options in the past, and there is a couple different ones, and there's ones where you hand it off uh, to the post office, and then th it disappears for a week, and then it shows up. If you use Amazon, um, or it's like economy, 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 ship or, or it's called Shore Post. There's lots of different sure ones. Post. And By the way, Shore Post is not sure at all. Yeah, it's totally unsure. And so we um, did some tests, and um, looks like that isn't a good option. So we decided to stick with UPS and just uh, keep our uh, rates really low for everyone. We have really good rates. So I saw like yeah. who's like, somebody was shipping a package to Spain, and it was like twenty dollars for yeah. UPS trackable. Yeah, yeah, international, and then good for deal. the and then for the US for ground, it's under ten bucks usually. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, that's okay. it. So our show and tell happen every week. We have people on the show and tell 
Uh, Lady Ada, maybe you can briefly... Of course. Uh, we're going to go briefly through it. Tony came in. He's working on character LCDs for Python, so you can use a character LCD, RGB, or plain with Python and Beagle Bone Blast or Raspberry Pi. So check out the GitHub repo. He'll post up a tutorial probably in the next day or two. Noah and Pedro from uh, Pixel 3D, Adafruit South, have uh, 3D printed uh, LED ring holders, new Pixel ring holders. They have a skateboard project that they are going to release soon. Toil's up, but they'll have 3D printed files up soon and the video up soon. Lond uh, did some cosplay with NeoPixel rings. He has a ray gun that has a little NeoPixel rings. It's like NeoPixel ring projects this week. And he also made a, um, an infinity mirror with a 3D, uh, with I guess 3D printing maybe, and an LED ring. And it looks like this like LED ring of infin infinity. And he came back with his rotary phone alarm. He showed up like a week or two ago with a rotary phone alarm. Um, he has improved it. It now has a really crazy loud bell. You can watch the video and watch it be extremely loud. Jasmine uh, came back with her science fair display. It is the best science fair display. It has Arduinos and servos and motors and huge buttons, and it's just great. Uh, she said it was the most interesting science fair display by far, and it's meta because it's a science fair display display. She also has a uh, camera dolly that she's working on, which is really nice. Nicholas Sayer came in with the Pi Power project he's working on. It's a buck converter for Raspberry Pi. It looks really nice. Everyone loves buck converters. Like, why go with linear and you go with a buck converter? Yeah. Um, so it, it's really good, very efficient, and you can power your Raspberry Pi with uh, various different battery packs. Uh, Rick came in, um, Rick Winscott, he's been doing some electric imp to 900 megahertz RF radio adapters. So he's doing like mesh networking when, with 900 megahertz radios, and he's using the electric imp as the Wi-Fi bridge. And then Roberto came in with the Not a Lizard project. Yeah. It was Not a Lizard, I don't know why, but it wasn't a Lizard, it was a Gemma Firewalker shoe build. I really hope he brings the uh, water dragon back because it's so cute. Yeah. That was your show and tell. That was a show and tell. How did they get on the show and tell, Lady Ada? Get on the show and tell, go to our Google Plus page at plusgoogle.com slash plus symbol Adafruit. Look for the post where we say, come in here to get added to the show and tell circle. We need you to comment there first so you get like the little like add to the circle thingy. And then we can click on your name to add you to the show and tell circle. You will join the other 276 plus people who are fun and interesting and show up every single week to show off their great electronics, mechatronic, robotics and Lizard Projects every week, All Wednesday, right. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, mailbag. Where's the mailbag? It's Peck the Mailbag. Peck the Mailbag is letters, tweets, emails, videos, and more from you. Okay. The great people out there. This is from Tim V1. Glad to have discovered Adafruit.com. You folks have interesting and fun stuff at reasonable prices. Excellent support, quick shipping, and reasonable shipping prices. We are so reasonable. I really like reasonable people. I am reasonable beyond the I've doubt. had to deal with unreasonable people lately. It's been unreasonable. And I don't really but like Tim that. Tim V1, I, yeah. reasonable. I, don't, I really like reasonable people who have reasonable expectations and reasonable goals. There's like six billion people on this planet, so yeah. we're unreasonable. Okay, let's move on. All right, next up. Adafruit Learning System. Yeah, plus we're it. getting there, we're getting there. Uh, Adafruit Learning System, we have a few tutorials this week. Um, this is one from uh, the phone tethering for Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone Black. Is that so, last week or this week? Um, we just posted it, so I think. Um, okay, e it might have been done last week. Either way, it's in my list to go over. Hey, check it out again. Uh, oh, yeah, I think Tony demoed this last week, so now the tutorial's live. Um, yeah, sorry. It's just because yeah. like, I was like, I've seen this before. Uh, and uh, it shows how to use PPP over the phone app. So the phone app can do GPRS, and you can actually do like a modem with cellular modem using the phone app. So he shows how to use a Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone, and you can tether it with cellular, and you can actually like browse the internet over a cellular connection using the phone app, which is kind of handy. Not suggested for like serious YouTube viewing, not very fast, <laughs> yeah. but good for sending uh, emails or data pushing or, or like sending basic messages back and forth. For that, it's excellent. Next up, the Cap Touch. Cap Touch Shield. We have a capacitive touch shield for um, Arduino. Raspberry Pi one is coming soon, but for the uh, for the uh, um, for the Arduino, uh, we have updated this tutorial so that it covers both resistive and capacitive. There's now a page just for the capacitive touch shield uh, paint demo and, and breakout. It's basically just you know very similar to the resistive, but um, now it's like smoother, glassier. Okay. And next up, we've got the tutorial that's going to be released tomorrow with the video. This is the Trinket NeoPixel LED Longboard. Yep. Uh, it's cute. It looks like it has little eyes on it and lights up. That'll yep. be on the site tomorrow at 9 a.m.-ish. 
We're on 98. It's a great build. I love the snap together part. It's amazing. Mm. He has a snap on thing, like press fit. Up is the LED friendship bracelet. This is from Becky. We're going to show the video shortly. Yeah. But this is a bracelet. Very and nice. With LEDs. Tutorial. Right. Why just make a macrame bracelet when you can right. add LEDs? And then last up, um, we're going to go over this in detail, but this is the massive mega guide that um, is making the rounds online. It's, I wrote this at 2 in the morning. That's the, how you know it's good. It's the technical guide that has all the differences about the Raspberry Pi B and B+, plus, what it does and does not do, GPIO ports, USB ports, hub, audio, video, card socket, mounting holes, what changed, what didn't change, all that, and a bag of chips, as they say. I love chips. OK. Um, we're going to zoom through some of these things. This week on wearables, we've got a video, and it's that bracelet video. So okay. we're going to uh, tune into that real quick, and uh, we'll be right back. Summer is friendship bracelet season, and when I saw a tutorial for this nautical paracord one on Etsy last week, I couldn't help but add some LED sequins. This simple circuit hides two batteries within the decorative knot and uses a magnetic clasp as a switch. First make the knot, then add conductive thread to build up some stitches that will touch each side of the battery. Check out the guide on the Adafruit Learning System for the circuit diagram and step-by-step -step instructions for your own soft battery holder. Let the connecting threads dangle free while you add the clasp, then wrap the ends with embroidery floss, starting near the knot. Cover the conductive thread for a bit, then fold it back and continue wrapping towards the end. Pick up a thread tail and start stitching to one LED sequin. Bury and trim the tail and use the remaining piece to stitch the other side of the sequin to the metal clasp. Repeat on the other side of the bracelet. CR1220s aren't the most optimal battery for LEDs, but they sure are tiny. You'll have better results with brighter LEDs like white and blue, and your mileage may vary with red and green. These pink ones are pretty blinding when they're at full power, so I don't mind the more subtle brightness. It's kind of magic to have something light up just by putting it on. I hope you enjoy making this project, and if you do, please share it with us on our weekly show and tell on Google+. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more wearable electronics from Adafruit. All right, and just a special programming note, um, we reached 10 million YouTube uh, views today. Yeah. 10 million, so we're like a little TV I network. I kind of like this bracelet. It's kind of yeah. fun. Yeah, it's got some magnetic clasp and has a little LED. Yeah, it's a friendship bracelet. It's Becky fun. made it for you. Okay. I'm friends with Becky. Okay. And you match my hair. Next up, um, every Thursday we have all the 3D printing news and more. We have a special video, uh, tutorials, um, news that I think is only in one spot. Because, because we don't make 3D printers. We cover all the 3D printers out there. I'm so excited about not designing and building a 3D printer. Yeah, tough biz. Um, here <laughs> not is, for me. Here is this week's video from, uh, well, sorry, last week's video from Noah and Pedro, and it is the 3D printed slider. Add cinematic movement to your video projects with the DIY slider. In this project, we're making a portable slider using a supported sliding rail and 3D printed parts. A set of machine screws secures the 3D printed parts to the railing and platform. Get the parts and files for this project on the Adafruit Learning System. The 3D printed adapter is secured to the tripod head. It's mounted to the platform, which includes ball bearings for smoothly sliding along the supported railing. The 3D printed feet can be customized to any size. They easily mount to the ends of the railing and are secured with machine screws. This 19-inch slide railing is made of stainless steel and supports up to 5 pounds. With this simple build, you can get high-quality slider shots for a relatively low price. Durable enough to hold our 5D, yet small enough for a camera phone. For getting epic smooth panning shots while sliding, use a fluid tripod head. What awesome video projects would you make with this DIY slider? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and if you liked this video, check out some more DIY camera builds, and be sure to subscribe for more 3D printer projects from Adafruit. All right, and we're back. They're making um, videos about making videos about tools to make <laughs> videos with. Yeah. Do you see that they had a slider shot of him making the slider using the slider that they made? Yeah. Awesome. Which which slid first, the first slider or the slider that filmed the slider? It gets complicated know. really fast. Okay, so that was the 3D stuff. So we. Um, we're going to not do some of the normal segments of the show this week because yeah. we have so much more to do. So before we get started, don't forget the code is B+. That's 10% off everything in the Adafruit store up until midnight tonight. This is celebrating, you guessed it, the B+, 
model is here. Um, so it was a big week. Um, lots of Raspberry Pi things. Uh, one last Raspberry Pi note before we dive right into the B plus yeah. bonanza. Um, don't forget the Raspberry Pi Photography Awards end Monday. If you have a Raspberry Pi, all you have to do is hook a camera to it and take a photo, mm -hmm. and you will probably win. Um, we have a lot of great photos, yeah. uh, and people have been sending them in. Um, it's going to be hard. But we have like 20 prizes. I decided to have a, a ton of prizes. So there's one grand prize winner of $314, and then there's 14 uh, $30 winners so all together that's a lot okay so we have we have we have a lot you of folks you have a really good chance of getting 30 yeah. bucks just for taking a Here, photo here's one that tony took of his cat using he's raspberry pie he's not gonna win yep but he, with this, he can we have um adafruit judges all these folks work here at adafruit and they're going to be picking the photos and we have a celebrity judge liz from the raspberry Pi foundation she will be helping us out so with all that being said it is now time to do the amazing wonderful detailed guide of Raspberry Pi B+. I'm just going to leave. You can yeah. do it. Okay. <laughs> it has more USB ports. <laughs> I'm just going to go now. There's a, there's a lot of like um, uh, gadget sites that they're not really into like... Like, yeah, like in gadget. Well, not no, it wasn't in gadget. I don't make fun of in gadget. It wasn't there in gadget. Like some... No, there was a lot of um, just like kind of pop tech culture things yeah. and they're like, the new Raspberry Pi's out and it has more Pies. Pies, and no, it, more pins and USB ports. And then your guide came out that you did, and you went through step by step by step. So let's um, let's jump to that right now and see how this works out. So here we go. Okay. This is the guide that you did. Okay, so we're, we're sharing now. Okay, great. Yeah, it just takes a little while to get this okay, going. Okay, hold on, hold on, right, walk All right, okay. so right, let's start. Go. What is new with the Raspberry Pi, Pi B Plus Lady Ada? Okay, so we got one of these pies. Uh, we got these pies uh, late last week. And the Model B Plus is the, the evolution of the B. And the Model B is kind of like the standard Raspberry Pi. So the B Plus, and they're, they're not going to just continue the B, by the way. They're going to have both. So if you have a project that uses the B, don't worry. They're going to be making it for, like, I think at least a year, uh, as long as people keep buying them. And there's a lot of cases and accessories that work with the B only. So the B Plus is, is very similar in shape and size. But um, there's a couple updates. Yes, there are uh, more USB ports. There's now uh, two more USB ports. Uh, there's a new USB Ethernet chipset, which is, allows you to have these four ports. There's 40 GPIO instead of 26, uh, and there's some side effects of that. There's um, two special pins on the GPIO for identification. The composite pin was, uh, composite port was merged into the audio port, so it's now a four-pole audio video port. Um, there's more mounting holes. There's four of them, and they're in a rectangle, which makes it very easy to mount stuff uh, to it and it to other things. Um, a couple connectors moved around, so the connectors are all basically on two sides. SD cards and micro SD now. Um, and LEDs, a couple of LEDs got moved into the Ethernet jack. So it, it's basically a really big improvement in my opinion. Like a lot of things that were frustrating about the B for me, like if you plugged in a USB dongle into the USB ports, it would reset the Pi, which is very annoying because you couldn't hot swap stuff. So they fixed that, they fixed that power issue. Um, there's now a buck converter for the three volts. The three volt pin can supply a lot more current, which is good because I hesitated from having things powered off of the 3.3 volt pins. Um, and now it's not a problem anymore. Um, HDMI is still there, display and camera is still there. So let's go through it step by step. Okay, as folks what? ask questions, I'm going to maybe try to um, uh, put them in, but you can say uh, maybe not now. So with the GPIO, someone wants to know, why does GPIO have so many ground pins? It has a lot of ground pins because whenever you connect to stuff, you'll need a lot of grounds. Like if you have LEDs or buttons, they always reference against ground. So it's, it's actually really nice that they have like four or five ground pins and two or three of each power pin. It, it makes it very easy to wire things up so it's not all connected through one pin. Also, you might be sourcing a lot of current through it. So having the, the ground pins spread out, it lets you balance it a little bit better. Okay. All right, so let's go to the first section. Okay, the first section is... Okay, what? so what does doesn't work anymore. So we're, we're still going through and testing everything because there's always little itsy bitsy bits. So for example, the Pi TFT electrically, it does work. Like it does work if you use it on, on a, a B plus, but we need to update the kernel because our, we have a special kernel that has the kernel support for the TFT. And um, because of the USB ethernet chipset, we have to recompile the kernel to support the new ethernet USB chipset. So it does work, but USB ethernet doesn't. So we have to fix that. Well, we're gonna be working on that this week and we hope to have a fix within a week or two. I think it'll be pretty fast because uh, 
they now that everything is uh, released, we can actually figure out what they changed. Okay. Uh, USB devices, nothing changed with that. Any USB devices that worked before should work again. Uh, any monitors should work. Uh, HDMI monitors, same exact HDMI system. Um, any audio stuff will work as well. Uh, cameras will work in the camera slot. The NTSC-based displays will work, but you need to get a splitter cable that has the video out. And we'll show that later on. We'll show the, the cable. Yeah. Oh, I have this um, okay, ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Whoa, big, big. Oh, no, yeah. too big, too big. Back it up, back it up. That's okay. good. All right. uh, okay, so here's the, the big difference for a lot of people is the GPIO cable and cobbler is different. So let's scroll down. Okay. Uh -huh. So you used to use a 26 pin cable like this, but now you have to use a 40 pin cable, which, uh, which is a big chunkier one. And I'll, I'll show it off later, but it's just like this gigantic cable. So the thing is you can't plug a 26 pin IDC cable in because it's a little wide. So if you scroll down, you can make it fit by cutting like two pins, but you probably don't want to do that. Instead, we have a cable that we'll have, it's called like a downgrader cable. And you can see here, it's got um, uh, sorry, a 40 pin connector here and then a 26 pin connector there. And then once you plug it into like, uh, like girt boards or anything else that has a 26 pin connector. So we have those on order, we don't have them yet, but it's just a solution that we've kind of come up with. Other than that, be aware that you can't just shove a 26 pin cable in, it's a little bit wider. Uh, so it doesn't fit with that little bit of hacking. Okay, next up, the Wolfson audio card and other I2S card, cards, not I2S, but I2S, those um, do not work anymore because they took away the I2S P5 port. Um, that's gone. And uh, it looks like it, those pins were not replicated on the 40 pin header. So you're not gonna be able to do that. Instead, you can use a USB to audio cable, uh, which we have in the store and they work really well. Or the, US, the audio is improved now. You may not need I2S uh, digital audio because the, the audio out is now much cleaner sounding. Uh, it doesn't have a little crackly uh, PWM unfiltered sound. So you may be able to just use the audio um, as is. Okay, third up, enclosures. Uh, all the enclosures are not gonna work. No enclosure will work. You need to get a new enclosure for the B+. Sorry, you can't recycle your old enclosure. Okay, oh, actually, can you... Um, Wait, turn. Can you uh, scroll so that, yeah, so the text is here. Okay, oh, yeah. so the power supply has been updated. Two different computers. Yeah, I know, there's like 18 computers here. Yeah. Sorry, I, I'll tell you when to scroll down a bit. Yeah. So the power supply has been completely updated. So the old power supply, um, can you scroll down a bit, had a uh, five volt in for the micro USB, and then it had a big cap, a 3.3 volt linear, and then a 1.8 volt linear. You can also use this. Like, oh, go like that. ooh, Magic yeah, Mouse. Was this the Mighty Mouse or the Magic Mouse? Uh, it's a Magic Mouse. Magic Mouse. Mighty Mouse was the cartoon I watched when I was right? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so, uh, so it has a linear regulator, and here's the schematic. So they've updated this uh, from having this basic power supply to, uh, and with linear regulators, to down the new power supply. Still has a micro USB in, but it has a dual buck converter, and we even kind of figured out what chip it was. And it has a lot more protection circuitry in here. There's a TVS, there's a, a, a two amp fuse instead of a one amp fuse so your fuse won't blow um, when you plug a lot of stuff into USB. There's a, um, a polarity FET um, to keep, it acts like a diode basically. Um, no, that's not no, good. No, that's fine. It's, this is what it is actually. Okay. Okay, um, and that's a schematic for it. And um, it's using, uh, yeah, P-channel MOSFET, so it basically has polarity protection, so I don't know, whatever you would be doing won't break it. Uh, and here's the dual buck converter now. So it's much more efficient. Instead of burning off the 3.3 volts uh, difference in heat, which would draw like an extra watt or half a watt, it's now like 95% efficient using this really nice um, uh, dual buck converter. And uh, you can like kind of show how you can figure out which buck converter it is. It's really nice. And it also has a hot swap protector, which will help avoid uh, any hot swap issues if you end up like plugging something into the five volt on the GPIO and it, you know, it, it pulses the power. Um, it now has a protection, current limited high side power switch, which is designed for hot swap. So it limits the current. So it's really nice. Um, it's a very special specialty chip just for like allowing you to unplug and plug stuff. So if you've ever had issues with your Pi where like plugging in USB or plugging in stuff to the GPIO resets it, um, you shouldn't have that problem anymore thanks to this improved power supply. Uh, here's the GPIO port. Again, this is the original, had 26 pins, and you can see all these pins. The new one is much longer, has 40 pins, so that means you get more pins. So you get nine extra GPIO pins. 
There's also two uh, extra um, EEPROM identification pins, which I believe are I squared C pins, and you will. The Pi Foundation will release more about them later, but it's a little bit like the Beagle on Black, where you can have a Pi plate that self identifies what it is, and so it can. You, know, you plug in the Pi TFT, and it would automatically configure it and download the kernel modules and turn it on, and it would be totally lovely. Uh, the first. 26, the first top 26 pins are the same. So if you have something like a Pi TFT or a Pi Brella or, or you know, whatever, Pi Glow or any of the other Pi accessories, um, you can plug those in just fine. They'll work. Uh, they'll be shifted down a little bit because it's not at the edge of the board. It's like a half an inch down. But other than that, um, electrically exactly the same. And then here are the extra pins. So you get nine more GPIOs. This is really great because like a lot of people were like running out of GPIOs. You'd have I squared T SPI, and then you're like, I need eight pins. I don't have them. So extra pins. And uh, I think it's good that they just like went ahead and did that because um, now you know we can have projects that have much more LEDs, GPIOs, buttons, like all good. Um, USB ports four. And also you can see the Ethernet jack has the LEDs built into them now, so it's a little bit nicer jack that has the LEDs, the yellow and green LEDs uh, in the bottom corner over there. And of course these four jacks. So one of the things that was annoying about the Model B was that you would have um, uh, you know, keyboard, mouse, and then you're like, uh, I can't plug in Wi-Fi. Or maybe you have keyboard and Wi-Fi, but then you can't plug in like your SDR or something or other USB ad uh, adapter. So now they've updated the chip from a two-port LAN 9512 chip to a LAN 9514. This is a four-port hub, and it has that power protection, which is really nice. Um, when you turn it on, it slowly ramps up the power to the USB um, ports, and also if you plug or unplug stuff, there's internal protection, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't like short out or um, reset the Pi. So uh, you know if you have something you plug into USB and it draws too much current or if it's shorted or something, you don't have to worry about it damaging your Pi with the nice new LAN 9514 with power protection. Um, but this requires a new kernel update. So if you have an old uh, Raspbian installed disk or an old coder disk or an old uh, Rasp BMC disk, you will have to do an upgrade. The problem is that you need internet to do upgrade and um, so you have to upgrade it on your Model B and then take that card over to your B plus because if you plug into your B plus, your Ethernet and USB won't work, and so you have to, like, you, it's like catch-22. That's like, isn't it ironic? I think it's ironic, right? Don't you think? It's like you have to update your kernel with USB, but you don't have USB because your kernel has to be updated? Yeah, I remember when we discovered that and we had to run a, um, uh, Ethernet cable. No, but then the Ethernet cable but, didn't work either. And then we said, oh, no, that didn't work. I was like, work, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, shoot. Because I, I was like, oh, they fixed the, the they changed the Ethernet chip. Yeah. So, anyways, I figured that out, All but right. uh, just be aware of it. Uh, so audio video, the old one used to have a big USB uh, composite over there and then this nice blue uh, headphone jack and now it is in a Svelte four pole AV cable. This is actually also known as a iPod video cable if you have a, one of those and um, I'll show you it looks like uh, this. It's a 3.5 millimeter but uh, has uh, left, right and video and the video is on the sleeve. So. Um, uh, there's a pinout in the schematic that we, we link at the bottom if you're if you're curious. But basically, headphones work just fine, uh, and it will just not pass the video through. And then if you have this uh, special cable, you will be able to uh, display video. So yeah, there you go. We'll have these cables in. These actually we used to have these for the Chumby Hacker Board, and we're yeah. gonna bring these back. Bring it back. So this is like ID two seventy seven, and I just get to yeah. it. And I'm like, okay, I gotta bring it back I, now. I've always said how uh, far ahead Bunny was doing embedded Linux it's computers so ahead. when he. It was almost ten years ago when Chumby came out. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. for the MX MX dot six. Anyway, so yeah, so basically. I think a lot of people, I mean, there wasn't a lot of space and not as much people were using the composite. Um, and also, it's, it's so easy and inexpensive just to get a cable. And you need a cable anyways to, yeah. to get at your TV. So you can just get one of these cables instead of an, H, you know, an RCA to RCA cable. And uh, we'll have those soon. We have to get them to make sure that they, they colors match and everything. Okay. okay. What's next? Running through them. Card socket. The old card socket was an SD card. It was very sticky outy. Uh, and it was a little bit annoying, and especially if if you were if you were caught on a case and you were pulling out the case, you could accidentally rip it off. And people did once in a while break them. They were not super durable. They weren't really they were you know low cost. Um, and the and a lot of people actually didn't like that they stuck out so much because it was it made it hard to get out of the case and also it was easy to pull out. 
The new version has a micro SD card socket, so they, you know, this is what people wanted. Um, all of the SD cards that we have in the store are come with micro SD because we kind of thought this might happen. Um, so you can use the SD cards that you have, just don't use the adapter. And um, yeah, it's basically the same cards work. You know, it's electrically the same. You know, same speed, same everything, except it's just now mechanically a micro SD instead of SD. Nice, nice Molex right there. Yeah. Molex card. And it's a push push, which is kind of like so you push it and push it out. Mounting holes. There's now four. It used to be two. Actually, the original had zero, which was like really sad. Uh, and then the the we have two came out, and they put two, and you can see there there's two kind of uh, kitty cornered there. One near the LEDs, one sort of next to the regulator-ish. And now the, uh, the Model B Plus has four, and there's a lot of clearance, and they're rectangular, and they put round rectangle, you know, rounded corners on the rectangle as well. So this is very nice, very good for mounting it to stuff. It uses M2.5. You can kind of use number four screws if you kind of screw them in. Um, there's even a nice diagram now, so you can make them into cases. Okay, and then no, what didn't change? Um, so the processor is exactly the same. Same exact processor running at the same exact speed with the same amount of RAM, 512 megabytes. Power connector is the same, it's been moved. Uh, same operating systems, nothing's changed with that. You do need to upgrade the latest kernel, but otherwise, you know, if, as long as the kernel's been updated, you can use any. If you want to use Arch or Gentoo or Slackware, FreeBSD, whatever. If it ran before, as long as the kernel's been updated for the new USB Ethernet, it'll work again. Um, the camera and display ports are exactly the same. They're not in the same location, but Raspberry Pi camera will work. And then I have got some fact questions, which are not important because like, people okay. probably ask them. Okay, that's okay. a tutorial. Wow, you did it. All right. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here somehow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how do I get out of here somehow? Yeah. I'm just good at this. Yeah. All right, doing some tricky stuff. So that is the Raspberry Pi Model B. Thank you, Lady Ada. You did it. Um, so we now have um, a couple of things to do before we do new products first. Uh, B plus is a code. B That's plus. Code. And you can get ten percent off a of B plus. Yeah. Don't forget. We still have some, right? Yeah, we got tons. Okay, and we got looking we're at We're doing my fine. Pile here in in fear. Okay, first up, we're going to do new products. The first thing is the, the Raspberry Pi B plus. Oh. So, yeah. We got it installed. Oh, that's right. We just talked about it for like ten minutes. Yep, it's here. Okay. Um, we have uh, a few left. We had to limit to one per customer because people, people people buy them all up. So get them while we you can. We do have a bunch. We we have we you know we have like a, a thousand or so, and yeah. uh, we have them in stock. And we'll be releasing the limit soon. We just want to make sure everyone had a chance to get one, so we're gonna end up with like a earlier style okay. Raspberry Pi short shortage. Next um, up. We also have a new case that Phil B Paint Your Dragon designed, and he has taken <laughs> the Pi box and improved it so many ways. Um, can we go to the overhead and I'll, I'll show off this like totally great yeah. case? Yeah. Okay, so this is the case here. I'm gonna move this box here. So um, first off, it's still made out of clear acrylic and we're laser cutting these in-house and we're gonna be working on an injection molded case. Um, but for now we have this laser cut case because it's much faster than laser cut than to injection mold. Um, it has a slot as normal for the GPIO. It has a little like notch here so you can remove and insert the micro SD. It has all the slots for the USB and Ethernet, um, all the plugs here. And then here's the cool thing. He added a, 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 um, a slot at the top for the display and for the camera, so you can slot them in. And super bonus, uh, there is a, a locking but um, hinged top, so you can open it up if you want to plug something in. And then if you want, you can even get to the GPIO when it's closed. Let me see if I can find, oh, here. So if you want to have cables come out of the GPIO port, you have a little slot here as well. So you can like, sometimes people like to, to stick little headers in. But I love this like hinging action. And then yeah, you can, you can plug your camera in and then it uh, snaps closed securely. So it's a nice little pie box. Nice work, Philby. He did that, he said he got it right the first time. He's amazing. Yeah. Round of applause for Philby. Yay. Yay. And also I wanted to show some of these photos too. So yeah, the photos yeah. are really nice. Yeah, so here's some photos. My thing. You can see it here. Open, here. close. Yeah, I really like the hinge. Hinge is nice. Sides, fronts, and it's very secure. We used um, like we because there's mounting holes, we could attach to the case, and that the case is attached to itself. So it's very strong. It's a very well-designed case. Yeah. I really like it. And this is what you this get. is what you get. Yeah. 
Okay. The little assembly takes like five minutes to put yeah. together. Next up, we have other cases too. These are yes. cases, um, MCM, which is part of uh, Premium Farnell. Which is Element 14, Newark. Yeah. Um, big party. Yeah. We have these cases, they snap together. Um, they're just snappy cases. You can show it. They yeah. have, uh, yeah, they have also a slot in it. Everyone loves a GPO slot. Oh, yeah, do you want to do the other one? Yeah, yeah, I'll show them really fast. I'll show both and you can. Okay. Um, nice cases, it's kind of translucent and this is black. We just, you know, that's our colors. There's little things on the bottom. There's, there's even rubber feet actually that come with it that you can, um, you can put on the bottom. You can mount it. There's just like unnecessary slots for heat dissipation because people demand them. Um, cases, it, it pops open in the center, like so. And uh, you know, this sort of sits in the middle. Yeah, there's little like little hooks that, that, that keep it in place. So that's good. And uh, yeah, you can snap it on. And um, there's like a slot for the camera and you can even like apparently put the camera in on here and then the display port when that comes out. And uh, it's got a little soap, dove soap looking thing. And then we have the black one as well. Yeah. I just showed about the same time. Okay. And just to recap, these are the photos from the cases. Case. See case. All of the Translucent. Ones. I think it's a, nice, it's a nice case. I mean, it's very, it's very basic, but yeah, it's got that, you know, snap together. Yeah. It's protective. Yeah. Attractive. Okay. Next up. Cobblers. We has new cobblers. Um, we designed this basically as soon as we found out, and so we have just a prototype PCB, and we're getting final PCBs in. This is a uh, cobbler, our, our most popular uh, cobbler, um, a way to connect a GPIO cable from a Raspberry Pi to a breadboard, and it comes as a kit. Yeah. So you get these parts, and you get this gigantic cable, and then here's how you use it. You have the you know, GPIO, you go to a uh, Raspberry Pi. We also have it in T cobbler shape, yeah. um, which is a little slimmer. And, but the text is a little easier to read. Um, these are designed by K-Town. And yeah, you can see how we even fixed the rotation thing on the T-Cobbler now because we know how people want to use this. And uh, also it comes as a kit, and eventually we'll have them pre-assembled, but we're gonna start with a kit because we can get those to people faster. Um, we also have a couple other accessory cable type things, such as a downgrade cable. Yeah. What's next? Sorry. Downgrade cable uh, allows you to connect a Raspberry Pi uh, 40 pin to an existing 26 pin connector. So if you have an existing cobbler or you have a perma Pi or you have a GERT board or you have some other thing that um, you want to connect a B plus to but it uses the 26 pin header, um, you, can't connect a, you cannot connect a 26 pin header to the Raspberry Pi model B plus, but this has the connector in the right location and everything. So you basically, it's a downgrader cable. Let's you pretend like your B plus is a B. Yeah. Okay, I got some more photos over here. Okay. Other side. Okay, we also have, of course, the classic GPIO cable, 60, uh, six inches long, 40 uh, pins in a slimming Adafruit black. Um, these are on order, they'll be here in a week or two, hopefully, unless there's an issue. And you can mm -hmm. see, uh, oh, that's a downgrade cable, and then, oh, can you get the next one? Yeah, this one? And then this is the, the 40 pin GPIO yeah. cable. So you can see, it's a gigantic, ass cable. I yeah. don't have to tell you. It's yeah. huge. The photos are a little similar. Um, we've got the downgrade cable. Yeah, which is And then we've pins. got the 40 pin cable. Yeah. And then you can see this is 40 to 40. Well, I just know that people have like permapi projects or something with the 26 yeah. pin header. And so they'll need something so that they don't have to rebuild the project from scratch. Also, it lets you, you know, like sometimes you don't need all 40 pins. And the cobbler, the, the 40 pin cobbler is much bigger. Yeah. It's not a trade off. Yeah, someone had a question about the previous case. So this case isn't really clear. It is, you, you can't really see through it's it. It's not clear. It's yeah. called... Uh, it's frosted. They, they kind of called it clear, but it's not. It's frosted. Yeah. Okay. Frosted case. Moving right along. We're still in pie territory. We got Hi. that cable. Back from the dead, it's the, the triple AV cable, uh, left, right, and audio. We're getting these remade because we sold out and from the Chubby Hacker board, but now it's back. And uh, so I decided, like, why make a new PID? Let's just make it live, and uh, you can sign up, and we'll get these in a couple yeah. weeks. Okay, and then um, to wrap up the Raspberry Pi stuff, this is for the Raspberry Pi Model B. Yep. Coupe. The coupe. This is the uh, slim and sexy new Pi Moroni case for the Model B. Yeah. We will also be getting the ones for the B Plus soon, but it's just for the B. It's slim, and I kind of like it. It's actually, it was growing on me. It's, it kind of uh, lets the, the Ethernet and USB kind of stick out a bit. 
But, it, you know, you can um, plug capes on top or uh, plates on top or uh, connect to the GPIO very easily. It's just a kind of a slim um, kind of a, a version where you don't have, it's a little bit of the Model A style, but for the B. Yeah. And um, I don't know, I think if you're going to like mess with the GPIO and stuff, it might be handy to have something like this. That's a good one. Okay, um, now we're out of Pi territory. Okay. All right, let's go. We're going to try to get through these, and then we're going to answer some questions. Okay. Yeah, I know. There's probably a lot of questions. Okay, can you, uh, can you just introduce us more like I get all the stuff right Yeah, now? these, these are the um, circuit stickers. Yeah, these are for Chibitron from Bunny and Chi. From Chibi. Bunny and Chi. These are Chibitronics, and um, we have all sorts of different types of them. Um, these are paper electronics. The copper is, uh, would you say bonded is the right? The, what, so, so what? Oh, the, it's, it's Flex PCB. It's Flex PCB. With Z access tape so on the back. So it's, it's all like stuck together. Yeah, it's uh, basically stickertronics. Yeah, stickertronics. Hold on. And, uh, Sorry, there's a lot of stuff on my... I don't make space because I've got to yeah. do the demos for this. So here's all the different packs. We have uh, a couple different Yeah, types. this was... He didn't... It, it was a, it's a crowdfunded project, and um, there are stickers that um, have electronic... They're, they're flexible PCB, as you can see here. There's, like, a button. There's a microphone. There's a light. There's a chip. And um, they come on, a, like, a sticker, but they're actually a flex circuit board, and this is the back of the flex. You can see it's a flexible circuit yeah, board. Yeah, super cool. And then what they do is they bond Z-axis tape on it, and that's where we got the Z-axis tape idea from, because when we first showed this to us like six months ago, we're like, what's Z-axis tape? And then we're like, oh my god, Z-axis tape is the coolest thing ever. So we got it in the store, which we, we use for prototyping. But um, these stickers, these are like LEDs, and they're, they, you can use, basically use them with paper to design electronic circuits with paper. And, it, and we have a pack. I'll show the, all the different things going on here. Like for example, here's a circuit, and this is a simple parallel um, LED circuit. So there's two thin strips of copper. And then um, you actually just stick the stickers on top, and th when you press down, the Z um, axis tape allows it to, to stick, but also be conductive. And it's quite conductive through the tape. So then, um, let's see, so you got like a coin cell battery, and then they, they have a very interesting Simple technique, you just use one of these little uh, clips that you use, binder clips. And um, you put the battery in. Let me see if I get the polarity right. Looks like I got it wrong. Try it the other way. OK, there you go. So then you have, oh, you have um, LEDs. Oh, I'm going to turn this off so there. Yeah, you can by using paper as the substrate instead of circuit board material. So yeah, this battery is just lighting up all these little LEDs. And they're stuck to the paper, and you could draw or paint or use conductive ink as well. So it's a couple of like different ways of doing crafty electronics. There's also a version here that has a microcontroller. Wow, this is intense. I don't know what this, this microcontroller version is. Let's look at this white LED version. Here's a, a, a version with some white LEDs. Let's me see if I can get the polarity right this time. Positive. OK. Yeah, so there you go. So you can have. Yeah, white LEDs, oh, and then to yeah. keep the battery holder someone in said place. in the chat, you can make a handmade greeting card with that. It's also yeah, it's basically for like any kind of, like, the, the idea that G and Bunny came up with is actually kind of interesting. They're like, well, kids love to do scrapbooking and drawing and stickers and stuff, but there is no way to add electronics easily to that. And there's a like conductive ink, but you have to, like, take an LED and you bend it and it, it cracks off. And what's nice about this is it's, it's fairly durable. Um, you know, you can use it on any kind of paper. You don't have to have a special substrate. You can use copper tape, and then you can, like, design a card, and then you stick these on top of it with the copper tape to light it up or, like, create sensors and um, effects. And so, yeah, there's the LEDs. So there's, like, uh, the workbook that has, like, circuit templates. And so, like, this one is, like, put the battery here, and then, you know, follow the instructions, and you can learn and experiment with electronics. Um, by using just like a notebook and some paper and you know a little bit of time, and, yeah. and then it shows you like all the different components. It's really good for workshops. Uh, good yeah. for young people who want to kind of have a notebook of projects they're doing and uh, learning. Yeah, it's like how to make the battery holder, yeah. how to make a switch. So the workbook is actually kind of nice because it's interspersed with blank pages and then like little diagrams. So it's like here's how you make a switch. You have the battery and an LED, and then you know, you make a switch by using conductive copper tape. Yeah. Um, so we have a bunch of like different um, things here. Light sensor template. Let me try this on. 
let's see, we'll put the battery in here. And then, I don't know how this works. It's the only thing I don't know. Positive? Hold on. I didn't you, have to read I didn't. The, you have to read the instructions. I know, I gotta read the instructions. Maybe I have to power it with something else. Oh no, I need a signal wire. Okay. I'll build this up later and I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll do a little tutorial about it. But um, I got the LED to light up. Yeah. So it's from, it's from Bunny and Chain. They did uh, a, uh, a, not a Kickstarter, a crowd supply, crowd supply project yeah. to, um, to fund these and they fulfilled other funder backs and then they're really nicely packaged too. And um, yeah, there's a couple different packs. There's a color LED pack, so you saw those red, yellow, green, blue. And there's white LEDs, which are like the nice white ones. People like white LEDs. Yeah. There's a microcontroller pack with kind of Arduino-esque language, basically, and to do sensor stuff. Um, there's effects. So these are smart. The effects ones are um, the LEDs like flicker and, and pulse. I don't know if we have. Can they be uh, peeled off and restuck? They can be. Yeah, yeah, let me show this. So this is what it looks like. And then, yeah, you, they I'm peel off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they can be peeled off and restuck as many times as you want. As long as you're, like, you know, not too clumsy, I guess. I mean, just make sure you peel from the edges. Um, but it has stiffener in it, so it should be fine. And you can see this circuit with a microphone. So this is a sound effect circuit. So it's kind of like a stickery version of Little Bits a little bit, I kind yeah. of feel like. And then the starter kit, which we suggest because it comes with, you know, all the instructions and, and stuff. Anyways, I don't do a lot of stuff here. Okay. But I wanted to show it all off because it was it's cool. Okay, we still have some ways to go here, lady. I know. We have this. Um, there's eight products. We have this microphone thing that just came out. Mini electric mic. It's super cheap. I don't have to show it. It's just a little electric mic. It's actually for Phona. Um, so Phona has a can w use a microphone for audio input. Yeah. Next slide. Bam! You solder it into the Phona on the microphone. So course. the Phona can be a real phone. So it can be a real phone. And then you have a speaker. We have a lot of little speakers. We didn't have a little microphone on wires. This one is on wire, so you can kind of snake it around your enclosure. So we'll do projects with uh, can you phone. you make me a little phone? Like a little phone? I'm yeah. going to make you a little phone. Okay. <laughs> Look, we're, I'm working on it. I got a microphone okay. in. All right, All right. That's it. Okay. Next up, you got this breakup board. This is a uh, TSL2591. We've carried the TSL2561, which is a, one of our most popular sensors, a Lux sensor. This is the TSL2591, which is um, like... 500 times more sensitive, something, whoa, back up. Oh, I don't even know how that got in there. <laughs> Sorry. Whoa, too much. <laughs> yeah, that is not the back of that product. That's not the back of that. <laughs> it's larger on the back than yeah. the front. Um, it's a you know, little sensor's in the middle, and it's 600 million to one dynamic range. It's incredibly sensitive, and you can set um, the gain, um, to multiple different gain settings over I squared C. You can set um, the uh, integration time. It basically is a very... Sensitive, very powerful light sensor, and we have some Lux calculations as well for it, so you can use it to calculate Lux uh, if you want to make your own Lux meter. But this is people are saying, like, I want something that's, that's more sensitive and incredibly bright light, so it can go up to 88,000 Lux, which is, like, bright sunlight, all the way down to uh, 188 micro Lux. So it's, like, it's, you know, that's, like, a really, really wide range. It's almost as wide as, like, your eyes, so it's... It's very good for anything where you want to do um, wide sensitivity light sensing, and it has both IR and um, full spectrum LED, so then you can take out the IR to get visible. So you can do visible and IR, basically. Okay. All right, we're rounding the corner here. We're getting we're close. Done. Okay, um, next up, we have a floor product. Yeah, I'm actually gonna, can I just talk about it while I set this up? Yeah. Um, the, uh, it's the UV. The UV, it's a UV sensor, so we basically took yeah. the UV, um, uh, uh, sensor that we had for um, the the breakout board version, and we made it so now it is uh, uh, floor friendly. So we'll do a floor wearable and sewable, wearable sewable floor project. Um, that's pretty much it. You can actually use the same uh, tutorial basically to set it up as before. Okay, we'll have a wearable project that you can see soon. Um, here's a good one. K Town's book is in our store. Yeah, getting started with Bluetooth low energy. That's right. If he you, wrote the book on it. If you like K-Town, get this book because he would like that. Okay, so the people who like, so we're doing a lot more Bluetooth energy stuff. We took a little bit of break because we had to do like displays and, and, and sensors and breakouts. But he's working uh, really heavily on um, more Nordic Bluetooth energy stuff, including some great new products that I can't talk about. Um, but he also has this really great book that he wrote with Akiva. These are great people to drink with. 
basically yeah. everybody here. Like they're yeah. extremely fun in the bar, and they know <laughs> a hell of a lot about Bluetooth low energy. I mean, like seriously, I don't know anyone who knows more than this. Um, they know a lot about RF, and they're they're makers. They're actual yeah. makers and hackers. They make things. They release open source hardware. They know this stuff inside out. So this book, I think, is going to be like the book. Um, it's not too thick either, which I like. And like you're like, what's GAT? I don't know. Read yeah. this book. You'll find out. Okay. And then um, I wanted to save kind of the, the best for last. This is a really impressive product that in the in the mix of all this B plus stuff, you released the, the first and only capacitive screen for Arduino, didn't mm -hmm. you? You were just you were doing This might be the only hobbyist capacitive touch screen in this size, yeah. like the three the two point eight inch, and I'm working on getting a three and a half inch one as well. But I'm starting with 2.8, and this was many, many, many months in the making. Um, back and forth with the factory, forward and back. Getting small, low-cost capacitive touchscreens turns out to be not so easy, especially getting ones that are pretty good quality, but I'm actually very happy with this. It's, it's got the really beautiful screen that we've had from the resistive touchscreen, but it now is capacitive. And it's single touch capacitive. Um, we're working on maybe trying to get multi-touch, but for now we only have a single touch capacitive screen. Uh, it was hard enough to get this, so I know. Everybody wants multi-touch, but we're single touch for now, okay? So give me a break. Uh, the chip can only handle like basically one touch, and, and also multi-touch adds cost and complexity. Um, but it's basically, instead of resistive, where you need to press down with your fingernail, uh, it's capacitive, just like your tablet, your iPhone, chances are any device you have that the touch screen is now capacitive. Yeah. Um, so it's a nice, smooth motion. You don't have to recalibrate it. It's kind of pre-calibrated. Um, it does I squared C over I squared C, so you don't have to use analog inputs to do anything. Um, it's not as jittery. It's not nearly as jittery as resistive, which always has a little bit of A to D noise. And I can just show the quick demo. Okay. I think. Let's go to the overhead. Yeah. So this is just the. Uh, oh, turn this off. Okay, that's good. So this is the uh, the touch screen demo for the um, capacitive, and I can just select the color, and then I can draw with my finger. So it's got a very nice feel to it. Um, it's got a little mini iPhone almost. A little mini iPhone. Um, it's still got the nice full color screen and yeah, I squared C uh, capacitive touch. And it's, it doesn't require a lot of firmware add-on to uh, do the capacitive touch. So most projects can use the capacitive touch. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just like, it's a lot more fun. Um, you do need to have like a finger, something, a body. You can't use your fingernail because it's not conductive. So just like... Your iPhone, you need to, if you want to use it with gloves or whatever, you need to have those special capacitive touch, uh, conductive gloves. Yeah. I don't okay. know. I really like it. I love capacitive and touch. And I'm so glad that I could finally have a capacitive touch shield for Arduino. All right. So, yay. It's you done. You got it. And that is the new products. All right. I'd say the um, cap touch um, is amazing. You're just saying that because you saw how much it sucked for me. Yeah. No, you, you guys just see the end result. I just see the years that go into it. And it's like eventually it works and it's done. I've it's actually like, been trying to get capacitive touch screens for, so yeah, two or three years now. Yeah. And um, they just were not even available. And then yeah. with the increase of um, low cost, like iPhone knockoffs, the capacitive touch chips and screens started getting into the market at a price that was like reasonable. Um, and like a lot of them, like you needed like USB or like weird things or you need to have the driver chip. Finally got to the point yeah. where it's like, I can actually get these small screens with capacitive touch at like hobbyist prices um, with like data sheets. Like, you know, it was hard enough to get a data sheet for this guy. Yeah. Um, it's not even really complete, but it was enough to get it working. Okay, so just a reminder, the code is B+, that gets you 10% off everything in the Adafruit store that we have in stock. Um, this is celebrating the week, the launch of the Raspberry Pi B+. Yeah. Um, we're gonna do questions right now. Um, yeah, we got five minutes of questions. Yeah, ask away anything about the B+. We're anything. probably gonna give away a B+, right? Yeah, I am. Time. I'm going to do it. You think of a question while... Well, I already did. Okay. It's already taken care of. We're going to go crazy. So um, some of the questions, uh, let me see if I can grab one from before. Okay. Uh, any recommendation on how to control the flora via Raspberry Pi? I'm thinking Bluetooth low energy. Hmm. Um, flora from the Raspberry Pi wirelessly is tough. Uh, I would actually use an easy key. Because SPP is, it, it's a little bit easier and simpler. You can just use the serial port on the Flora and pipe data through the easy key. And then it can show up on the other side of a Bluetooth uh, host. And you can use blues um, on the Raspberry Pi. I think you even have a, we even show how to do that. Or if not, there's a lot of tutorials on how to use blues on the 
um, Beagle Bone uh, or Raspberry Pi. Okay, I can answer this one. I know the phone just came out, but any chance we'll see a 4G version sometime soon? So the answer is on Phona um, roadmap, you'll see probably almost every type of network, but the there'll be Phona LTE eventually. Yeah. So the first thing to do is get Phona out in the most low cost, high quality way possible using a worldwide network, mm -hmm. and that's 2G. And T-Mobile um, has no plans to shut it down. The rumors may be 2020 or who knows. Um, so there's a long, long time because that's the machine, the machine network. You only need um, little bits of data. So uh, the, the first Phona is uh, 2G, and uh, we have a whole bunch of documentation on where to get SIMs. T-Mobile is the place to get them, of course. And then there's 3G, and then there's uh, 4G, then there's LTE. Yeah. So what we'll have is each one, but there's no real module that's like, Cheap and uh, reliable yeah, LTE, and low cost. LTE is like not yeah, cheap. If would, you want a module, it's like, it's like a hundred bucks. Yeah, it's, so you may as well get you may as well buy a phone just for the module. Yeah. So a, so the way we do the products are um, as the prices of the modules drop. Um, that's uh, you know years later, and some of the networks eventually three G is going to go away. You know? Yeah. Like there's only so much. We're spectrum. starting with two G because yeah. it's it's well known, it's well understood, and then we will we, you know we already have samples for CDMA and WCDMA and LTE and all that and EVDO and all that stuff. It's just like it's just really expensive. Like everyone says they want that, but then they see the price and they're like, what do you mean it's two hundred dollars? Like I don't want that. I want forty dollars. So yeah, yeah. trade offs. Okay. Um, so next up. Um, this one is, is the RCA auto-enabled you use to have to specify HDMI or RCA with the new audio jack? For the Raspberry Pi? Yeah. It's the, probably the same as before. OK. So uh, the, yeah, that jo the, the jack that does the audio yeah, out? Yeah, I'm, sure I'm sure it's, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I, you should ask the foundation. I don't know specifically, okay. but probably. All right. Does the B plus model come with more PWM pins than the B model? No, there's no PWMs on the Raspberry Pi. It's only 18, and it's shared with the audio jack, so okay. there aren't any. Um, I can answer this one. When will um, Adafruit sell SIM cards? Uh, it's it's not if. It is a question of when, and we're working on it. Um, in fact, we had a fun meeting today about that. So yeah. um, you can expect it soon. We hope. Turns out, just selling SIM cards isn't as easy as just selling. No, SIM cards. it's actually <laughs> quite complicated. Yeah, there's some stuff you got to do. And we're doing it, because that's what we do. Um, next up, let's see, there's a lot of stuff. Um, what is the hobbyist price if the cap, of the cap touch shield? What's the hobbyist price? The shield, I think, uh, I think it's $50 for the okay. cap touch shield. OK. Can I use the Bluetooth LE module with laptop Bluetooth? Yes. Oh, wait. Uh, yes, if you're using um, uh, Apple computers, laptops, or Windows 8. Windows 7 does not support low energy. OK. Um, can you get the time from Phona? Yes, you can. Um, I don't have example code for it, but it you know, does have a, a real-time clock built in. And you can query the, the network for the time, but you have to be on the network. So you can't, like, you have to be connected and like talking to a cell tower to get the time. OK. Uh, does the B plus have any analog pins? Nope. OK. Uh, let's see. Um, could you add a set of the 440 nylon screws to your Arduino plus breadboard to store? I broke a few. My local shop doesn't carry them in Adafruit Black. Oh, okay, right. we'll think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I know you need to have an Adafruit Black. You could, you could call it with a Sharpie. Yeah. I know Sharpies come in Adafruit Black. OK. Um, next step, I'm bouncing around here. Um, can a Raspberry Pi be used as a work pad, uh, repeater, controller, all in one for the print bot? How is that, is that viable? Yeah, I think someone on the show and tell did that. They had a printer bot driven by a Raspberry Pi. I think it can do it. OK. Uh, next up, is there anything you guys are hoping that will evolve in the DIY community or some electronic that you want to become more available? Um, I'd like to see uh, biohacking stuff. I yeah. think, I think um, more ability to have more people um, who are as motivated in electronics to work on um, like DNA sequencing and all sorts of stuff would be yeah. uh, kind of cool. Also, uh, it's kind of scary, like all good things. So. <laughs> yeah, more biohacking. Yeah. All right. Uh, next. Uh, um, how much is the sticker circuit thing? Do you remember? The Check the Adafruit shop. Yeah. And let's see. Um, there was another one way, way, way up here. Um, is there a stocking? Uh, is there a supply issue with the SI4713 boards? Where are those boards? 
Uh, no, I we I think we have them in now. I think okay. we've so maybe sold out, but we're gonna be making more of them. Okay, we might have just sold out fast. Yeah, we they were very popular. Yeah, uh, but we're making more. I don't you, think we have. Usually, any. when there's a supplier issue, we know because we're like, oh, we talk about it all day or something. I think I think we're okay on those. Okay, yeah. and then um, let's see. Uh, we'll do a couple more questions. That's it. If a three volt I square C device uh, data sheet says five volt max on data pins, can I mix it with five volt? I square C devices on the same bus provided I give appropriate power on each device. Yep, sounds fine. Okay. Um, this is a question I don't really know the answer to, but um, well, I can answer one. Yes, we're going to sell the Raspberry Pi compute module. The other part of the question is why do why are they more expensive than normal Pi? Go ask the foundation. I yeah. do not know. I do not set prices. Yeah. Um, and then uh, that's it. Okay, we're done. Nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, let's uh, give away something. Lady Ada, what are the rules? Rules are if you won anything from this fine show, you cannot win again, only one winner from my lifetime. You can enter if you've won something on Becky's wearable show, because <laughs> I'm not Becky. And I, don't, I don't keep track of who won on Becky's show. Today's prize mm. is a B plus. Yeah, we're gonna no, we're give not. we're gonna give away a B plus. You got a Raspberry Pi B plus. Okay. So for people who have not won, this is a, a fantastic prize. Okay, what's the question? For, yeah. oh, for, first person to type it in, to YouTube or Ustream? What are you going to do both? Yeah. Um, YouTube and Ustream. So here's the thing. Um, I'm going to give away two B pluses. Two? One in the YouTube chat, one in the Ustream chat. Yeah, but what if somebody's in both and they just copy and paste? It? Well, they're not. Okay. It's whoever I see first. So here yeah. it is. You just have to type in the product ID for the B plus into the chat. Whoever I see first. What number? What product A3 ID? Shop? So I'm going to. Grab one person from the. I haven't memorized because I had to like look at the it. Ustream, so much. yeah. What is the product ID for the? B plus. For the B plus. N in numbers. So, let's see who gets it first. Do 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 do. Very exciting. Product ID. Yeah. B okay. Uh, Dan Rez, 1914, you got it. Dan Rez, you won. Yay, Dan Rez. Dan Rez, you won. Yay. You're okay, so email support at adafruit.com, Dan Rez, and you get an Adafruit, uh, sorry, <laughs> Raspberry Pi B. Plus. And, and then in the YouTube chat, uh, Fish MR. Fish MR. Fish You get won. a fish now. Yeah, you won. Yay! Two B pluses. Yeah. That's so. Very generous today. Yeah, you get a B plus, Fish MR, nineteen fourteen, and so email. Dan Rez, you get one. So email support at adafruit.com. Include your username and uh, your, your address, address, and we will send you. The fair address. address. Yeah. Well, people like they're like send it to me, and we're like we need yeah. to know where you live. Well, we can send you one. Yeah, it's cool because like in all these chats, people type that number. Of people, are like, what happened in nineteen fourteen? <laughs> But that's the product. We've been putting in a lot of like 1980s stuff right now, so it was like 1983, and I'm like, that's a good year. Yeah, we're hitting product uh, 2000 right now. 2000's coming up soon. Okay, that's it for tonight. Whew, All right. That was tough. That was tough. Yeah. But look at this bracelet. I'm gonna put this on you. That's nice. I'm gonna dress you up. Okay. Wait, hold on. Oh, you got like big wrist. There yeah. you go. Uh, so I got, a, I got a bracelet. I'll wear the black one. Okay. They will, people will know we're together. We'll be like, who are those freaks with light-up bracelets? Yeah. All right. So that's the show. Um, thank you, everyone. Don't forget the code is B+. Um, that keeps us going. Get stuff 10% off. And uh, use it. Expire tonight at midnight. Celebrating the Model B+. We had a, a week of... It was a week. This has been one long day since Sunday. It's been extremely long. Yeah. And, uh, I would like a break from yeah. putting in 20 new products. Yeah, we are. And we have just a few things coming up this week. Next week's going to be a great show. Mitch Altman's going to be on the show. Woo! That's right. And Becky is going to be... Becky's speaking Hope on Saturday. On Saturday? Saturday. Yep. Okay. Everything's going on. In three days? In three days. Yeah. So yeah, don't forget. See, just see Becky if you're in New York City. She's going to be talking about wearables probably. Yep. Um, we'll I see everybody next week at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget, um, show and tell, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wearable Wednesday. Verbal Electronics with Becky Stern, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, thank you, everybody, in the show and tell. Thank you, all the Adafruit folks that are tuning in and helping. And thank you, everybody who's back here doing a whole bunch of shipping. You can hear the shipping. Yeah. So much shipping. Yeah. So how, many, how many orders did we ship out on? Was it Monday or Tuesday? It's like 1,500. 
1,500. Yeah, it was 1,500 orders. Products went Big out. Uh, okay. Orders went out on Monday. Okay. And uh, Fish MR, who's watching in the chat, I hope still, um, please email support at adafruit.com. Um, you're asking how you can get your prize. You email support at adafruit.com. Okay. Don't forget to email. Yeah. Here's a picture of a cat. And here is your moment of Zener.